Right, hi again guys, uh, me and Ramon, Ramon back to bother you with some more guitar frolics today. Uh, we thought what we'd do today is show you a different clutch of guitars, um, sort of super guitars, boutique guitars from the late 80s through uh, the 90s. Um, we're starting off here with my PRS Custom 24, uh, which was, um, as you probably saw from the last uh, video we did, which uh, addressed the, the Paul, Paul Reed Smith Lovers and Haters Clubs. Uh, this is one of the first PRS's that came into the UK um, and the PRS Custom 24 was the um, uh, the production model, if you like, the first proper production model that, that PRS made back in the 80s. I think it started in about 87, right. something like that. There, there are examples from 86 or 87. This is yeah. one of the first ones in the UK. Um, so, twin humbuckers, uh, PRS switching, so uh, a rotary switch. Um, just point of order for the geeks, uh, I've got metal dome knobs on uh, because I just got fed up of creaming through more and more speed knobs every time I clicked the five-way uh, position selector, so I put metal indestructible knobs on. Is it easy to do it on the fly when you're doing a gig and you need to switch, is it easy? Uh, if you're used to a five-way switch on a Strat or a toggle on a left yeah. ball, it's, you have to think about it more. It's right. more of a distraction. You can't do it in between notes. Right, okay. So you can't do that kind of... Like... No. And right. you, know, you, you certainly can't do that. Blah, 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 blah. No, you can't do that. Um, but the switching's clever. You know, you've got everything from, from full round is the... Uh, you know... The... You know, full treble. This is your neck pickup. And then in between you've got a kind of sort of out of phasey something. And then you've got two in the middle. And then a very hot telly sound. Which is... So, which is sort of maybe cool tapped bridge, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there is an explanation in the booklet as to what these are, because they combine right. they combine different coils from different pickups and stuff, so right. the two outside ones or just that one or whatever. And, and does it do one good tone? <laughs> so, sorry. The one, the one I always go back to is the neck pickup. Because right. the pickups, the, the bridge pickups from this era, they're all very, very sharp. Right. Powerful, right. hot, but sharp. Yeah. So, you know, uh, but that's that. Uh, good trim. Locking tuners, um, lovely piece of maple, typical PRS, you know, very yeah. high spec. Um, so that's that. You are holding a Brian Moore MC1. Which is a beautiful guitar, isn't it? Uh, beautiful. Another fantastic piece of maple. So this is Tiger Stripe, whereas this is Quilt. Yeah. Um, two single coils, but actually these are both double coils. There's Seymour Duncan, um, JB. So this is the neck one, should I just... <laughs> Uh, that's going to be these two together, but if you want the stratty sound, take it out of phase. Uh, sorry, single coil. So that's that, and balls out, that's, that's the humbucker in the bridge. Uh, nice, yeah. So, you know, quite a versatile guitar. And what's um, that, that straight down there? So that's that. It's just just, just like a, a strat, a five okay. way. So you know, one pair, oh, middle see. pair, okay, okay. and then the coil tap yeah. uh, on these guys just gives you the access to the thinner sounds. Okay, so it's quite simple, but yeah, it's quite simple. Yeah. Okay, nice. What's interesting is the jack plug goes here. Don't know if you can see that, guys, on the back. It's clever. Yeah, and it's got the telly style. And it's got ferrules, yeah, so it's, it's, it's strung through. This is this is a hard tail. Most of them come with a Wilkinson trim. And it's also got the... what's it going on here? Uh, the, so this is the truss rod adjustment, it's through the heel. The, the back of the guitar is one single floor pan, they used to call it, like in cars, um, uh, of um, uh, carbon, carbon fibre. Fiber. Um, so, uh, and this the Brian Moore used to work for Ned Steinberger, uh, which is where he learnt his um, graphite and carbon fibre moulding Great. and honing skills. So that, that's what it is. And the headstock is a, is a uh, slab of maple veneered on, spurzel locking tuners on that end. The body is a piece of curved maple layered over. So it's it's mm. semi-hollow, it's kind of chambered. Yeah. Uh, and it's quite light. 
I mean, this would be this is a nightmare guitar for me because of the curvature. I need a, a scratch plate to level it off, like a Les Paul scratch plate. I can't play a Les Paul. So you find yourself falling off the strings. Yeah, yeah. But should we should we do a little, little groove? Of course, nice why not? Here we go. Why not? because I never play it. Uh, because it's it's magnificent, it's beautiful, it's fabulously made, it's got mm -hmm. probably the best action of any of the guitar I've, I've, I own, mm -hmm. um, but I just don't, uh, it doesn't talk to me. Right. Somehow. Um, I hope it finds a, a nice loving home with someone who loves the hell out of it. Oh, there's a lot of people that are really passionate about these guitars. Uh, so, you know, but it's, it's time to let it go. Um, right. I mean, I've had it, you know, I've had it since new, I've had it since 88, so I've had it 31 mm -hmm. years. Right. So it's, it's had a good good innings. Not much fretware even, although this was my main gig in guitar for quite a long time. So I mean, it has had some use. But you know, because of how I am, I keep these things neat yeah. and clean. Nice. It's pretty mean. Um, this one here, I think, well for me, it's it's got such an immediate hi-fi sound. It's yeah. like it's just um, you know, you pick, it's so immediate. You hit a note. You, know, you hit a note. It pops right out. It's very yeah. even. Every single note. It's just pops out. Yeah. In fact, it could just be a little bit too hi-fi. Yeah, yeah. You know, so my criticism with this, it's just like too well made. It's like it's, yeah, it's, it's like a bicycle. Yeah, you it's know, one of those Tour de France racing bike. Yeah, it feels it's, like it as well. It's, yeah. it's got something in common with my '54 wraparound gold top, though. Both that yeah. guitar and this guitar, they sound fine at you know, yeah, um, polite volume. But you get them cranked with an angry amp, and they sound fantastic. This guitar yeah. really, really. Something comes out of it, right? Like volume. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a. I actually prefer this guitar to the PRS. I think yeah. I think you're probably right. It's a bit of a fusion guitar, isn't it? Oh, for fusion, it would be amazing. You know, nice, yeah. nice wide, flattish neck. You know, you yeah. do all your scale stuff with it. So you know? sort of. <laughs> Me. But yeah, it's 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 great. Should we move on to the next? Yeah, let's 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 introduce another um, another suspect. Uh, this is from '91. It's called a drop top. The reason it's called a drop top is because I think Tom Anderson was the first person. Um, obviously, Stratocasters have always been rolled off on the top, but Tom oh, yeah, Anderson was the first it. person who actually put a, a maple cap on the guitar and yeah. rolled the maple cap off. That's right. a fit. So it's got that beautiful smooth contour like a Strat. It's a very comfortable guitar. Yeah. And this is basically a Super Strat. It's two stacked single coils, so the humbuckers, yeah. and then and they've got one big, the bridge. big pole pieces like Schecter's. Yes, and yeah. they're, they're Tom Anderson's own pickups. Um, yeah. If you if you're watching for the uh, Tom Anderson spotters out there, this is not the Tom Anderson pickup. I still got it, but I took right. it out because it was very thin and honky, and mm -hmm. I put a bare knuckle mule in to try and cure that, and it right. did work, um, but not completely. The, the the guitar's fantastic for clean. Fantastic for single coils. Mm -hmm. When you do balls out lead, it, it, it hasn't got the body the, the, the body in the note, and that is from yeah. the wood. Great. Um, so it's got the nice um, Floyd Rose. Carla, Carla yeah. licensed Floyd Rose. It's got a beautiful neck. Uh, it's a bit thin for me, but it's um, it's a satin sort of very thin finish. I'm guessing it's polyurethane, <sighs> maybe not nitro. It's not nitro. Uh, it's probably poly. Yeah. poly it, it, he. Uh, 
Tom Anderson used to make the necks for Pencil Sir guitars. Right. Before he started up his own workshop. And the necks, just like Pencil Sirs, they are they're fantastic necks. Yeah. Quite big frets, not like a Jackson, but bigger than yeah. some. Yeah, it's a uh, Fred's beautiful, I mean, incredible workmanship on this neck. It's amazing. beautifully made, and, and uh, the switching here is, is quite interesting. So what do the three switches do? Well, first of all, this one, right? Yeah. This one just takes the bridge directly to the... Oh, wow. Right? So up is normal, yeah? Yeah. Up means that these are engaged. Right. And each of these, if you have it in the middle, yeah. you won't get anything out of that guitar at all. Wow. Whatever you do, right? Yeah. Which is a bit of a nuisance, because it yeah. can catch you on the gig. Yeah. Right? But it, then you go to... Okay, so that that's that switch relates to so that pickup. Right. Up is single coil. And that's like a strat in between positions one and two. Right, okay. Okay, so going back to neutral there, that is now that as a humbucker. Sound. Yeah. Uh, exactly the same going on with the next pickup. So this is middle pickup only. Yeah. And middle pickup with. Nice. And yeah. then likewise, this is uh, this is coil tapped. Yep. Humbucker. <laughs> So that that coil taps and that, for example, that's now these two single yep. single coil. So you've got a lot of permutations. Yeah, there. it's really nice. So how that, that that one there, sing, um, how do I get these two? Uh, those two, right? And do you want that as a full handbucker and that as a single? Single coil. Single coil. Single coil. Up for there. Up for there. He's off. Right, that's it. That's nice. So what we've got here? Uh, right, this is a Steinberger GM4T. So uh, graphite neck, uh, no head. Great travel guitar because it's almost the size of a tennis racket, so you can take it anywhere. Um, this was designed between Ned Steinberger and Mike Rutherford of Genesis. I love Mike Rutherford. There you go. Great player. Do you like his guitar tone? I like everything about him, his hairstyle, <laughs> I like <laughs> the suits that he used to wear Oh, with their padded shoulders, yeah. um, great songs as well, was it Mike and the Mechanics? Oh, fantastic songs. Yeah, he's a great player, you know. If you ever watch this, Mike, we love you. Yeah, from one public school boy to another, bravo, mate. Anyway, <laughs> there you go. Uh, so he designed, he, he wanted a Steinberger, but he didn't want the little cigar box body. Yeah. He wanted a guitar that, you know. And this has got the expensive tremolo system, hasn't it? It has. It has. It's got three EMG pickups, two single oh, coils okay. and a humbucker. Yeah. Uh, very conventional tone, volume and five-way. Yeah. Uh, you know, the five positions being what you'd expect. Yeah. And this is called a trans tram, uh, which is a tremolo. So Incredible uh, piece of machine. I won't, I won't put the arm on, screw it in, but basically... Um, Unlike any other trim, yeah. you set this up so that it goes out of tune, in tune. Wow. Oh, that's incredible. I and, love and, that. And, you, and what's more, you've got this little step thing here, you yeah. can lock it. Right. You can lock it a, a tone or two tones down, Amazing. or a tone or a tone and a half up. Wow. That's and incredible. it does. It sounds quite fun if you lock yeah. it up a tone and a half. It sounds slightly mandoliny. And it's also carbon fiber, obviously, isn't it? Yeah. So it's similar to the Brian Wood body, carbon fiber neck. Because Brian Moore came from. He did. Burger.
Beautiful. I mean, that guitar sounds awesome. And it's fantastic. You yeah. Know, clean through a desk with yeah. funky sound. It sounds great. And this guitar here is, it's got a really beautiful um, voice. I, mean, I think so far this is my favourite one that mm. I've played. Um, I like these two. I like these two better than the Brian Moore and the Right. So, so you like the boutique guitars with, with the thinner, cleaner sounds. Whereas yeah. The, those two are a bit more kind of less poorly humbuckery and these yeah. are a bit more fendery. Yeah, and this, this, I'm surprised at how great this guitar is here. Yeah. You know, this is an amazing piece of gear. So this is a Music Man Albert Lee signature model. Uh, they've made these since the mid-90s. I, I think it's just, I think it's a guitar with a sense of humour because it's basically, you're looking at a Stratocaster that's been straightened off. It, that's what mm -hmm. they've done. It's a, it, it, guitar wise, it's basically a straightened off strat. It's got three pickups, five way switch. And is it one piece of wood or two pieces of wood? Uh, is it? It looks oh, like it's, it's joined. It's joined. It's, yeah. it's got it's two, bits, two bits of wood. Two bits um, of wood, yeah. Nicely figured. It's a red going into pink sunburst. Mm -hmm. um, the pit guard is not original. The pit guard was cut for me by Paul Chandler in America. Why was that? Because I saw Albert Lee play one of these with a pearl yeah. pit guard and thought, that's really, really cool. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I managed to get, uh, I managed to get my own back years later, when I bumped into Albert. There's, there's me, Bob and Albert. Me and Albert, with my guitar. And when I when I met him, he said, "Christ, you got the pearl pick card on? I've never seen one of those." I said, "No, I copied yours." Um, anyway, did he sign it? Uh, no, no. I, okay. When when you meet a guitar player at a gig. Yeah. Right. Worst thing you can do, guys. I'm sure you all do it. Good luck to you. I yeah. don't. Never ask them to sign a guitar. And basically, what happens is that if, if they sign guitars, if they sign I don't know, three hundred dollar, what have you guitar. Somebody will bung it on eBay and say signed by yeah, yeah. signed by Derek Trucks, and it's basically just a profit making exercise. So guitar players, proper musicians, really hate it when you go to a gig and say sign my guitar. But if you go to a gig, small gig, you know, in North London, like I did. And you say, sir, would you mind very much? Well, I'm not going to sign your guitar now. I don't want you to. Just want to take a, take a picture of you and me and my guitar. That's nice, right? And that went. That goes down. And he's nice. a nice guy as well, isn't he? He's a lovely man. Yeah. God, what a guitar player! Oh. Ah, yeah. I mean, he's worked with um, Country Boy that track, and Emilio Harris. Emilio, Emilio. Should we do um, a bit of a Clapton? Because I know you played with Clapton, didn't you? He did. So should we do a little... Um... Show you uh, what I kind of feel with this guitar is um, 
I mean, I can't do this like Albert can, obviously, but it's that whole hybrid sort of... It's got that kind of whole thing, you know, yeah. where you can... You know, it's, it's so fast and the neck is kind of oiled. In music, oil. man, music Man necks are, all the ones I've played are fantastic. Yeah. They're Just beautiful. beautiful finish, be beautiful, you know, beautiful setup, all the rest of it. Um, you'd think the way Albert plays, he plays clean and he plays like that, you know, really percussive, and you think he's probably using some fat strings. He uses very light strings. Right. Um, right. So this is set up pretty much like his. Wow. And when he, when he played this, he said, I could play this so like, yeah. I, I, right. It's surprising how yeah. much percussion yeah. and heavy stringness he gets out of a light strung guitar. But he, yeah. he's got all those Nashville tricks, like those wonderful runs you do oh. where you skip strings and throw in open strings in between. You know, I think speeds. he invented that. I, it's, think, I think he was a guy uh, that kind of invented his, his knowledge of the fretboard, you know, but, yeah. but, but in the country major scale, he, mm -hmm. he hardly plays blues, not much minor. Right. It's all kind of major, but it's just. Yeah. Major top, yeah, and this is kind of the instrument that that works for him, you know. And I guess it's kind of you know, it's kind of got a Telecaster tone. Yeah. So, so know? basically, his design spec to Music Man was, I want you to, mm -hmm. Music Man wanted to make him a Stratocaster configuration guitar. Yeah. He said, okay, but I'm a Tele player. So this yeah. is this when you're playing it, it feels yeah. kind of a bit like a Tele. It is, and you, when you're doing. Sort of, yeah, much more that because a strat is really scooped, isn't it? Where this has got that mid range, I think. yeah, yeah. So, okay, so, um, but what, what are our opinions about the, these? We, we've just got, sort of pay, played the best and the worst, or should I, the best, <laughs> <laughs> oops, the best of the 90s contemporary, yeah, boutique. I don't know what, what how would you describe well, it? Does? So, so, probably, certainly, the, the, the Steinberger I'm holding, the Paul Reed Smith, the Brian Moore and Tom Anderson were were definitely described as boutique guitars of the 90s. Yeah. The, the Music Man is a slightly more... Music Man is a bit more of a mainstream company, a bit more right. of a corporation, yeah. so this is not quite, not quite a pee in the same pod. PRS has now become a corporation. Hasn't PRS it? has become a major business. I mean, unbelievable yeah. success. Yeah. You know, incredible success. Yeah, I mean, uh, this channel is not just about tearing PRS guitars apart. It's not our aim here on the guitar show. Is it, Bob? It is not. No. It is not. Go Just on, in case I, anybody thinks that. I own one, you know, and yeah. as you know, as I said in the previous video, that, that guitar more or less rehabilitated me as a guitarist. So, so yeah. you know, all, PRS, all respect yeah. to you. But, but uh, the, th this, this guitar, this guitar, you know, I keep on saying it in videos, I'm a bit of a vintage freak, vintage guy now. This guitar channels some vintage. Oh, I think out of all the guitars, this one... They're trying to be modern, this is... Yeah, if you said to me, can you, you've got to do a gig now. I will take this one out of all those guitars. So this would be my favourite. My second favourite would be um, the Tom Anderson. Oh, the Anderson, yeah. yeah. And my third favourite would be the Steinberger. Yeah. Then I'd probably go for the Brian Moore, yeah. just because it's more it's loud and robust. And I'd say the PRS would be my least favourite guitar. You know? Yeah. <laughs> enough, enough, <laughs> enough. But the, the, the one thing about this guitar is it's it's a real joy. Because can, you, can you rate them one to five, Bob? You rate them one to five. It's really hard because they do different things. I tell you what, I want to rate this highly simply because you can, I can put this on my back it's an and walk thing. onto an aeroplane. Because right. for, for me, I mean, I, I, sorry to interrupt here, but I play a lot of African guitar. This is an amazing for playing though. The world music sort of African guitar. Yeah. This is a, the beast. That. Actually, some of those African musicians, I mean, ge generally they play on pretty ghastly instruments, but some of them play on the, the yeah. honers. No, that's they? right, yeah. Cheap, yeah. cheap, you know, yeah. little Steinberg. Brego, a lot of Brego guys play yeah. on the honers, Steinberg. You know. Yeah. So, what is your favourite out of these ones? Oh, it's really hard to say. P probably, probably that. This one because because, because this, this one, it, it, the reason I love it so much is because you can travel with it. So, number one, no. number two. Number two, yeah. Third. Tom Anderson probably. I'm the same order as you, then Brian Moore, and then PRS. I'm, PRS I'm the same order. I'm the same order. Yeah. But you know, the, the the thing is, it's not 
it's not fair and it's not relevant to rank details because right. we we are we have different tastes that happen to coincide on this particular ranking. But somebody out there might go, that's a piece of tap. I love playing those, and they're, yeah, they're as right as we are. Absolutely, yeah. So, Music Man. I mean, I, I, this is literally the first Music Man, really, that I've spent some time with, and I've got to say, I'm really bowled over at how good Music Man are. So, um, you know? I've just, I've just sold. I don't have it with this video, which is a shame. I've just sold a bright magenta pink uh, Edward Van Halen. Um, first year of hit that model, 92. Music Man? Music Man, right. and a lot of similarities. Incredible necks, yeah. fantastic setups. Yeah. You know, they, they are, it, you know, like the old, um, the old line, Avis, we try harder. Right. And I've always said that about Guild with respect to Gibson, and I've yeah. always said it about Music Man with respect to Fender. They are, they, they maybe I've just been lucky, but every mm -hmm. one of those manufacturers' guitars I've had has been. It, they've just gone the extra yard. Yeah, I see what you mean. You know, yeah, they're just yeah, beautifully yeah. turned out. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I, I think guys, you, obviously, you've got your own opinions about what you like, but um, certainly here in the room, just listening in the room, the, the music man was great, and also this Steinberger. I think maybe I'm going to choose that second as well because it is a, it's an incredible guitar. I think it it really was. You know, if we're talking about the '90s guitars, which kind of revolutionized and really took it to the max. Yeah. You know, you've got to say this has got to be. You know, this this guitar really did take it to the. Yeah. You know, really took it out there, didn't it? And you know, I mean, it, you you look at this and it's a little thing. You know, it's it's tuning stability is fantastic, very accurate. You've got this transform, so you can tune whole chords, bend whole chords. Um, but the other thing, I mean, this is a you know a proper professional stage instrument. You can yeah. play stadiums with this. Well, I remember. Really, I mean, I'm not a take that fan. You know, take that the yeah. boy band. Um, but the, I remember reading years ago. In the guitarist magazine, I think it's called Guitar One or something. No, guitarist, can't remember. And the guy, the session guy who played with them, he did the whole thing on, on one of these, and he was like a quintessential sort of London session guy, right? right. And he, he did everything because I think it's from that Alan Holdsworth, you know, the yeah. Alan Holdsworth sort of yeah. carving. And then, and then Reeves Gabrels did a lot of stuff on guitars like this and derivatives. Um, Daryl Sturmer, who played in Genesis. Stuff he, you know, great guitar player. He used these, yeah. You know, and other Steinbergers because there were Steinbergers that were black strats with a funny headstock and the old Firebird tuners, the ones that copied with Firebirds now, right. and and all sorts of stuff. I mean, Steinberger were re really on a roll back then. Okay, okay then. Well, that's enough rambling for today. That's five guitars from the late eighties and early nineties for you. Um, we'll be back soon uh, with uh, an evisceration of some more uh, groovy stuff. But for now. Cheerio from Ramon. And it's goodbye from me. And Bob. it's goodbye from me. Take care.